Tonight on Fox 10 Investigates, it's a scheme involving human trafficking and health care fraud. The FBI says Native Americans are being targeted and taken advantage of. For months, we've been tracking how this all works. Fox 10 Investigator Justin Lum joins us live with part one of his series. Well, John, Christina, Native Americans are 500% more likely to experience alcohol-induced deaths and 20% more likely to die from drug use, according to a 2021 report by Arizona's Department of Health Services. Now they're being recruited from multiple reservations in our state, New Mexico and South Dakota, by behavioral group homes and sober living homes. Organizers pitching services to the most vulnerable. But what happens when the services promised are never provided? You don't live here, you're trespassing. So where do you live? Yeah, I won't go. Are you okay? Yeah. You are? Okay, because you can barely stand and I saw you laying there on the porch. I need help. Because this is not the first time we find you passed out. <laughs> Let me uh, drive you around. Please. What you just saw is happening in a community of beautiful new homes located in Phoenix near 91st Ave and Indian School five minutes from State Farm Stadium. It's just unbelievable. Residents who are fed up want to remain anonymous. This neighborhood has been living a nightmare for the last year. Cindy and Monica tell me dozens of behavioral group homes have popped up in the neighborhood. Since then, they say it's normal to see people passed out in driveways and porch fronts. I think it's really blown up in 2022. Uh, it's just become the new fraud scheme. Special Agent Antoinette Ferrari explains to me how this scheme works. A group home or sober living home is set up by either purchasing or renting a house. The services offered are for substance abuse or mental health issues. Organizers target Native Americans from several Indian reservations. These individuals may be intoxicated and will likely be offered alcohol while transported to the home. Organizers receive government funding through the Arizona Healthcare Cost Containment System, or ACCESS, capitalizing on Arizona Medicaid benefits belonging to members. Tenants are also told to give up their food stamps to provide food for the home or as rent payment. In order for group homes to get paid directly through ACCESS, that requires licensing with the Department of Health. The FBI believes licensed facilities are also paying unlicensed individuals to recruit patients. Well, for example, if I opened a legitimate facility and then I asked you to bring patients to me, I could pay you to bring those patients to me, but that's a kickback and that's illegal and that's healthcare fraud. Where the root of the kickback money comes from exactly is part of the FBI's investigation. Ferrari believes the bad actors aren't providing the therapy services they're supposed to, yet millions of dollars are being paid out through health care funding. This happened about, I must have been around 7 at night. Last September, Phoenix police investigated a death in the neighborhood. As a neighbor was walking her dog, she basically saw a body laying there in between two <clears throat> unlicensed group homes. Police say 44-year-old Carson Leslie fell asleep in the back of a car, choking on his own vomit. According to the medical examiner's office, Leslie's death was an accident and the cause was chronic alcohol abuse. The toxicology report reveals his blood alcohol content was 0.541, nearly seven times the legal limit. The autopsy report says he was in Flagstaff and approached a vehicle belonging to Victoria Group Home, LLC. The Department of Health says Victoria Group Home is not licensed with the state. These are supposed to be sober homes. They should be sober but they're not. So they're not managing them. They're letting them out. They're getting drunk. And then they come back into the neighborhood. Don't realize they're at the wrong house at 2 or 3 a.m. trying to break in. Residents here have taken pictures of large unmarked vans they say indigenous people are transported in. The FBI says all kinds of vehicles are involved, staking out locations like flea markets, trading posts, and the Phoenix Indian Medical Center. These recruiters are getting paid per patient, sometimes per van load, per car load. So they're going to get as many patients as they can, as many clients as they can. And that idea scares residents like Cindy and Monica. My biggest fear is that, because some of these are for mental as well as drugs, we have family, children, that they will try to break into our house and somehow, you know, attack us. So we reached out to Access multiple times in hopes to get officials on camera for an interview about what's going on. 
A spokesperson declined but released a statement saying in part, since January 2022, the Access Office of the Inspector General has terminated 87 providers suspected in these targeting activities and has instituted several provider payment suspensions. In addition, Access has al allocated additional resources for quality management oversight and is conducting on-site facility reviews to ensure member health and safety. People are not going to like this when they think their tax dollars are being squandered by charlatans out there taking advantage. Are they recruiting on the reservation to find people? It's now branched out from the reservations as we're learning to all over the valley. Um, as you saw the Phoenix Indian Medical Center, flea markets and things like that. And it may not just be Native American people. As you'll see in part two, homeless people can also be recruited because we're talking about shelter, food, a nice neighborhood, um, and there's obviously intoxication of this sure. type of behavior yeah. going That's on. That's just more money for them. Exactly. Right. That means more benefits yes. to enroll people in to get paid from. Obviously, it's, it's a lot harder than it looks, but people might ask the question, how, can they just leave? Why can't they just leave? Yeah, it's not as simple as that. I mean, we heard from someone coming up in part two who stayed in dozens of homes. Um, it's not so simple for them just to leave because they'll get picked up again and when you're talking about being vulnerable, mm -hmm. uh, being addicted to drugs or alcohol, and that um, behavior keeps going on, you're enabled, it's definitely very hard to leave. In part two, you'll hear from these people who have stayed in these sober living homes and advocates who are trying to get missing Native Americans back home. Wow. Wow. Justin, thank you. Justin, thanks.